In this video tutorial, we're going to look at the process of adding risk functionality to a standard InfoWorks ICM 1D 2D hydraulic model. Hydraulic models are typically used to predict where flooding will occur, and indeed the depth of flooding at any particular property. However, they can't predict the actual damage, whether that be financial or structural, that's likely to be caused to properties and other buildings uh, as a result of the hydraulic analysis. And that's where InfoWorks ICM Risk Master comes in. This can be used to convert the hydraulic depths predicted at properties into an actual damage where the higher the depth of flooding, the more damage that is caused or the longer the duration of the flooding, the more da damage is caused. So let's start by looking at a standard hydraulic model. This is a classic urban area where a number of properties are known to be at risk of flooding. We can see the uh, major roadways in the model and we can see the pipes and the manholes that are running um, as the uh, standard part of the drainage and sewerage system. In each of the properties there is a small triangle and uh, this is uh, a damage receptor um, and it essentially indicates the property that we wish to analyse with the risk analysis. Now these uh, property indicators will come from a number of different sources depending on where in the world you are but uh, for the United Kingdom as an example the uh, properties will be indicated by the National Receptor Database which is essentially uh, a database created by the Environment Agency and it uh, allows you to pinpoint particular properties or sets of properties that are at risk and assign them various categories to uh, describe that risk in more detail. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the two processes that are needed in order to add risk capability to your standard hydraulic model. There are two items that need to be added. The first are those uh, damage receptors. And uh, you can see in this model, um, nearly all of the properties have got a damage receptor associated with them already. The second item we need to import is the curves relating the depths of flooding to the damage that would be created, uh, the financial damage that would be created as a result of that flood. So let's see how both of those two options operate. Let's start by zooming in uh, to start with uh, on the centre section of the model just to give us a, a better view. And you'll see that this particular property here has not at the moment got a uh, damage receptor associated with. So we'll look at the process of adding in that particular damage receptor. And that's done as uh, a point object in this particular case. So we're going to use our uh, point object tool and simply put in a point in the middle of the uh, building here. Now in this particular case, as I've said, this is going to represent a damage receptor. And we're going to give it a number. 4562, um, which happens to be the reference number of the building that it's on as well. So we'll put that in to start with. And you can see we now have a triangle that uh, has occurred in the middle of that particular building. What we now need to do is to associate that triangle, that damage receptor, with the property that it's actually in, because it's the property that will flood and the property uh, flooding capability will be determined by the 2D hydraulic analysis in this particular area of the model. So we're going to link our damage receptor to the porous polygon that we're using to represent that building. And within that porous polygon, we're going to use the actual identifier of that porous polygon as the uh, uh, item by which the two, I, the, the two data structures are linked. And you remember we had 4562, which was the number of the um, damage receptor that we've given it. And it happens that my building here is also called 4562. You can see there property number 4562 within the 2D zone. So we'll put in 4562 here. Now, of course, there are a number of ways that you could uh, link the uh, property to that polygon. Um, I've just done it by typing it in manually. But uh, one of the other ways to do it may well be to create an SQL. And uh, we could have a look at the type of structure uh, of the SQL that could do that. So you can see here we have a an SQL that sets the damage receptor. And the field we want to do is the shape reference. And we can see that it's getting that reference by looking inside the network layer containing either polygons or porous polygons. So that would be an example of an SQL that could uh, attribute that number automatically if you wanted to. The other item of data that we need uh, in order to do our risk calculation is the area of the property. Now, this isn't a compulsory item. Uh, if we don't know area information, we can just use an absolute value for the uh, properties or the damage receptors. But in this particular case, we can get a much more precise answer of our risk calculation by actually attributing an area to our damage receptor. And of course, the area will actually be the area of our property. So the larger the property, the more risk there is of a higher damage. Now here, we can use our um, uh, 
SQLs again in order to do that. And you can see in this particular case for our damage receptor, we are going to set the area based on the uh, area of the porous polygon that that scepter is standing or sitting with inside of. So if I take this SQL and simply run it uh, as it is at the moment, it's run the SQL and we go back to our property sheet and you can see that it has picked up the area of the property as being 0.006 hectares. We can check that value if we wish by using our information tool on the actual uh, porous polygon itself. And you can see here that the area of the polygon is indeed 0.006 hectares. So that value has been transferred for across for us automatically. The final part of the puzzle is to uh, bring in a damage function. And uh, these can come from a variety of different sources. And they are um, non-hydraulic items. They simply relate the um, damage uh, that's going to be done to the property based on the water depths that are developed in the property by the hydraulic model. So if we have a look at the example that we have here uh, for this particular model, we can see that we have definitions for different types of residential property from bungalows through to semi-detached houses and terraced houses. And we can see that we've also got a number of definitions for our commercial buildings. And the item that we're particularly interested in here would be the terraced house because that's the predominant building type in this particular area. So we can see terrace going on there. So what we need to do is to make sure that our um, damage receptor here is actually going to represent, in this case, a terraced house. Now we could put in semi-detached or indeed detached. It might well be that's a detached house. But in here, we're doing a very simple analysis where we're just assigning the common building type, which in this case is terrace, to all those things. Now, in order to bring in these damage functions, uh, rather than using something that's preset, this is a very simple process. We simply say that we have a new damage function and there are then the ability within the tool, a standard part of the software is the ability to read in the United Kingdom multicolored handbook data, which is the standard definition for relating depth to damage. And uh, we've got various derivatives of the handbook that were produced originally in 2005 and uh, again in 2010. And there's a, another new version that's just about to be published that was originally developed in 2013. They all do the same. It's just the functions and the damage associated with them have been updated over the years. Here we can see we have the ability to split between both a short duration storm and a long duration storm. And this is important because that will affect the damage calculation. The longer the storm, the more damage, even if the depth is lower. So we, so we can differentiate between the two that we have there. Or we can have a standard setting for non-residential properties where we don't differentiate between long and short duration storms. So let's have a look at uh, how we might bring in the data for a short duration storm. And the multicolored handbook uh, has the uh, uh, CD-ROM that goes with it. And that CD-ROM allows you to export a number of different definitions. And you can see here we have got CSV files for our bungalow, our detached house, our flat, our semi-detached house. And finally, at the bottom of the list, our terraced house. And these are all for the short duration storms. So we can pick that up, load it into the software. It's a very quick import procedure. And once we've got that information in, we can then open it up. And here we can see our different codes relating to those different uh, property types. And these are the standard multicolored handbook definitions. We've added the description over on the right hand side so you can see what they are. Everything from a bungalow to a terraced house. We are looking here as our threshold. Our short duration threshold is a threshold of 12 hours in this particular case. And we're doing our damage calculations based on the uh, depth of water in the building, but also the area of that building as well. So let's have a look at some of the curves that we have. We can see here we've got uh, data relating to our short duration curve for our bungalow, our detached house. And if we want to have a look at the relationship there, we can see that in this particular case, damage is predicted to start at around about nine pounds per square meter when the depth of water is 0 0.3 below the threshold of the property. So that would be enough to uh, come in through the air bricks and to potentially start to cause damage uh, just underneath the house. Once the depth of water um, goes above the uh, zero mark, then the damage values start to increase um, quite dramatically. And particularly once we get above um, around about uh, 0.5 meters depth here, um, you can see that the, uh, the damage values accelerate away quite happily. 
Now we can generate those curves for every single one of the property types that we have, and there will be a slightly different shape for each one. The multicolored handbook also allows us to uh, differentiate uh, based on the age of the property. So we'll have a different curve for a detached house built within the last 10 years, as opposed to one built within the last 100 years. And we can also differentiate based on social class. So the uh, uh, type of people that live in those particular properties and their social standing within the community. Those are the only two items that we need to add to our standard hydraulic model in order to do a risk calculation. All we need to do once that information has been sorted out is to do a standard hydraulic run of the model and the hydraulic results from that run will create um, the exact same results that you would do normally for a standard 1D, 2D model, except for the fact that there'll be a couple of extra results, which will be hydraulic data associated with our damage receptors. So there'll be a hydraulic depth associated with each one of those damage receptors and the duration of flooding associated with each one of those damage receptors as well. Having added in our damage receptors and having created our damage function, the final uh, item that needs to be uh, put together with the model is to associate not only the damage receptor with the property that it's within, but also all of the 2D elements that either touch that property or are within that property in the case of a porous polygon. So let's have a look at that final step now. To make things a little easier, we'll zoom right in onto the uh, junction of our road and in particular, look at our particular property that we put our damage receptor within. And you'll remember that was 4562. You can look, uh, if you look at the background, you will see the spider's web of the uh, 2D mesh uh, function that uh, goes on. We can highlight that a little bit with our element view. If I increase the visibility of the elements uh, in the view, you can see the the 2D uh, mesh around that building. But what we're particularly wanting to do is to attribute all of the elements that are around the building with the building itself and then obviously onto the actual damage receptor so that all the 2D depths that are created uh, will come back to that one particular damage receptor and then be applied to the damage function. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Uh, and it's a very simple process indeed. Uh, we just use our select tool. We pick up our damage receptor that we are particularly interested in. And we tell the software using the model menu, using the meshing function, that having created our 2D mesh, which we've already done, you can see that, we need to assign the 2D elements uh, associated with that building uh, through to that particular damage receptor itself. So if we just do that very quickly, you'll see there for our new damage receptor, just the one of them, we've associated all the uh, all, all the elements that go with the building in which it's contained. So we've picked up seven elements that are either inside or um, surrounding that particular building uh, to pick up the function. We can double check that data by going back again to our properties and themes and actually looking to make sure that it's been done. So let's go with our elements. Let's just for visibility uh, clarity, turn off the visibility of all the general elements. But for my particular element um, or particular elements that are associated with my damage receptor that I've got selected, we can just turn the highlighting on for that particular one. And you can see now that all of the triangles that make up the seven elements that either are go around that building or are contained within that building are now all highlighted. So any hydraulic result at all that is created within any of those um, highlighted elements will reflect back to the building uh, and obviously within the building and then onto that particular damage receptor that's associated with the building itself. Those are the only processes that need to be done to the model in order to convert it from a standard hydraulic model into a risk model. So we added in our damage receptors. We associated our damage receptors with our properties. We imported our damage function relating the predicted depth against the um, actual financial impact or financial risk. And we uh, enhanced the meshing function with one further step, which uh, associated all the elements with the property uh, back to the damage receptor so that the uh, resulting 2D depths can be converted into a value of uh, financial risk. That is all that's needed in order to edit the data values. Uh, the next stage is obviously to do your hydraulic simulation, your 1D, 2D hydraulic simulation, and then on to look at the uh, actual calculation of damage and subsequent calculation of risk. And that is what we'll do next.